Hi everyone, welcome to today's GCSE Foundation Revision video. So there's 94 days to go into a GCSE Maths exam and today we're going to focus on fractions. So we're going to look at how to find fractions of amounts, we're going to look at simplifying fractions, equivalent fractions, we're going to look at ordering fractions, uh, we're going to look at expressing things in fractions and so on. Now all of those questions are quite useful, the topic's quite useful uh, for, you know, for their own sake. So for instance, you might get a question saying simplify this fraction or find uh, you know, you've got two equivalent fractions, what's the, the numerator and so on. But they're also useful in other topics, so for instance equivalent fractions is really useful whenever we're looking at adding fractions. Expressions of fr expressing as a fraction might be useful whenever we look at perhaps a probability question and so on. So if fractions is a very important topic, I highly recommend that you obviously watch this video and then whenever I give you questions to do yourself, feel free to pause the video and to try those and make sure that you're confident with those. So we're going to look at fractions today. Let's get started. Okay, today we're going to look at fractions. So we're going to look at fractions of amounts. We're going to look at expressing as a fraction. We're going to look at simplifying and equivalent fractions and also ordering fractions. So it's important to be able to work out fractions of amounts. So here we've got some questions where we've been asked to work out a third of 36 and work out four fifths of 45. So to work out a fraction of amounts, which is a third of 36, well, to work out a third of 36, we just divide it by three. To find a third of something, you just divide by three. If you want to work out a quarter of something, you just divide by four. If you want to work out an eighth of something, you just divide by eight. So we're going to do a third of 36, so we're going to do 36 divided by 3, and 36 divided by 3 is equal to 12. So a third of 36 is equal to 12. Now that one was quite nice because it was one third. Now this one, we've got four fifths. So when you've got a fraction like this, we divide by the bottom and times by the top. So if we want to work out four fifths of 45, we're going to take our 45, we're going to divide by the bottom, so we're going to divide by five. So 45 divided by five is equal to nine. Then we times by the top. So we do nine multiplied by four, because the numerator is four, and nine times four is equal to 36. So four fifths of 45 would be equal to 36. So to find a fraction of an amount, if it's just a third or an eighth or so on, you just divide by the bottom. But if it's got a number, number on the top rather than one, you do divide by the bottom and times by the top. So just to give you a bit of practice now, can you please work out a quarter of 24, two thirds of 60, and can you also work out two sevenths of 35? So pause the video and give those three questions a go now. Okay, so the first one, a quarter of 24. So to find a quarter of 24, we just divide by four. So 24 divided by four would be equal to six. So that's equal to six. Two thirds of 60, well, we divide by the bottom and times by the top. So we're gonna take our 60, we're gonna divide it by the bottom, which is three. So 60 divided by three is equal to 20. And then we're gonna take our 20 and multiply that by the top. So 20 times two is equal to 40. So that's equal to 40. And two sevenths of 35, we take our 35, we divide by the bottom, which is seven. So 35 divided by seven is equal to five. We then multiply by the top, five times two is equal to 10. So that means that two sevenths of 35 is equal to 10. Okay. So that's how to find fractions of amounts. Now let's have a look at expressions as a fraction. So sometimes we might need to express things as a fraction. You might get questions such as these, or you might even have to express things as fractions, maybe in a money question or even in a probability question. So our first question says, write two days as a fraction of three weeks. So first of all, we've got days and weeks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change our three weeks into days. So three weeks is seven days in a week. So three times seven is equal to 21 days. So that means that three weeks is 21 days. And we want to write two days as a fraction of three weeks. So two days is a fraction of 21 days. So we just write two out of 21 or two over 21, like so. So two over 21 and that's it. So two days is a fraction of three weeks would be two over 21. Okay, so here's another question, and try this one yourself. Feel free to pause the video and give this one a go. Okay, so we were asked to write 20p as a fraction of £5. So £5 would be 500p, so 500 pence. And we've been asked to write 20p as a fraction of that. So we're going to write 20 over 500, writing it as a fraction. So 20 over 500. And in this one, I'm going to cancel this down. Now, in a moment, we're going to look at simplifying fractions. So I'm just going to show you how to cancel this one down. So if I was to cancel this one down, I'd divide both of these by 10. And that would give me 2 over 50, just divide both of these numbers by 10. And now we've got two fifties. I'm going to half both of those to get 1 so 20p as a fraction of £5 would be 1 25th, and that's it. So that's how you express things as a fraction. Okay, so we're now going to look at a wordy question which uses fractions of amounts and expressing things as a fraction. So here's a question. It says, Gregory receives £600. He gives a third of it to his favourite charity, and he spends two-fifths of it on a new violin. What fraction of his money does he have left? Okay, so if you want to have a go at this question, feel free to press pause and try this question now yourself, and then I'm going to show you how to do it. 
Okay, so to begin with, he's got £600. He gives a third of it to his favourite charity. So if we take the £600 and we divide it by three, that'll tell us how much money he gives to charity. So we're going to divide it by three. So six divided by three is two. So 600 divided by three would be 200. So he gives £200 of it to his favourite charity. So that's how much he gives to his favourite charity. And he also spends two-fifths of it on a new violin. So let's work out two-fifths of the £600. It's two-fifths of it, so of the amount of money he received. Be careful if it said two-fifths of the remaining money, but that's not what this question says. It says two-fifths of it. So we now need to work out two-fifths of £600. So we're going to take our £600. We're going to divide it by the bottom. So we're going to divide it by five. And let's use our bus shelter method for that. So 600 divided by five. How many fives go into six? One remainder, one. How many fives go into 10? Two. And how many fives? is going to zero zero so whenever we take our 600 and divide it by five we get 120 we now need to times by the top so 120 multiplied by two would be or well, doubling in 120 would be 240 so that means he spends 240 pound 240 pound on a new violin and he gave 200 pound to charity and the question says what fraction of his money is left so let's work out how much money he has left so altogether he spent 200 plus 240 is equal to 440 pound. So he spent 440 pound. If we take that away from 600, if we do 600, take away 440, we get, well, let's do a column subtraction here. 600 take away 440. Zero take away zero is zero. Zero take away four, that's borrow, so it's a five and a one. 10 take away 4 is equal to 6, and 5 take away 4 is equal to 1. So he's got £160 left. And the question is, what fraction of his money does he have left? Well, he had 600 to begin with, so we had £600. So we had £600, and he's got £160 left. So that's 160, 600 of his money is left. And let's just cancel that down. And again, in this video, I'll talk about simple fractions in a moment. But just to go through that, we would divide both of these numbers by 10, and that would be 16 over 60. Then I would half them both. That would give us 8 over 30, 30 ths We can half that again. That's equal to 4 fifteenths. And that's it. We can't cancel down any further. So what fraction of his money does he have left? The answer is 4 fifteenths. And that's it. Okay, so now we're going to look at simplifying fractions. I said I'd come to this. So we have got three fractions here, and we're going to simplify each of these fractions. If you want to give this a shot now yourself, feel free to pause the video and to cancel these down. Okay, so our first question says to simplify 6 eighths. So 6 and 8 are both divisible by 2, so we can divide both of these numbers by 2. And if we divide both of these numbers by 2, well, 6 divided by 2 is 3, and 8 divided by 2 is equal to 4. So that would be 3 quarters. So 6 eighths is the same as 3 quarters, and we've cancelled it down or simplified it. Okay, next we've got 15 25ths. Both of these numbers are divisible by 5, so let's divide both of them by 5. 15 divided by 5 is 3, and 25 divided by 5 is 5. So 15 25ths cancelled down or simplified is 3 fifths. Okay, and our next one. Our next one is 12 eighteenths. So 12 eighteenths, 12 and 18 are both divisible by 6. So I'm going to divide both of these by 6, and 12 divided by 6 is 2, and 18 divided by 6 is 3. So that would be 2 thirds. So 12 eighteenths cancelled down would be 2 thirds. And just to show you that if you had 12 eighteenths, you could half both of them to get that equal to 6 ninths, and then you could divide both of them by 3, and that would give you 2 thirds as well. So just because I divided them both by 6 to begin with and got the answer in one go, that's fantastic. But you can also, like in the previous question that I did, whenever I was looking at this one here, I didn't divide both of these by 40 to begin with. What I actually did was I divided it by... 10 and divided it by 2 and divided it by 2 again and that got us the same answer so in these questions our answers were 3 quarters 3 fifths and 2 thirds okay let's have a look at our next topic so our next topic is equivalent fractions and this is particularly useful whenever you're dealing with questions such as adding fractions you might want to find equivalent fractions so here we've got a half and a half is the same as five tenths if you had um, a circle or a pie or something like that and you cut it into two sections one half would be the same as if you divide it into 10 equal sections and had five of them, you would have five tenths, and they're equivalent, they're equal to each other. And if we have a look at these fractions, if you multiply the two by five, so if you multiply by five, you get that that's equal to 10. And also if you multiply the numerator by five as well, you get that's equal to five, so you get five tenths. So as long as you multiply or divide both the numerator and the denominator by the same thing, you'll get an equivalent fraction. So here we've got two thirds is equal to eight over blank. And we've also got blank over five is equal to six over 15. If you want to have a go at these equivalent fraction questions now, feel free to give it a try. Alternatively, you can watch me do it.
Okay, so we've got two thirds is equal to eight over something. So to get from two to eight, we multiply by four. So we need to multiply the denominator by four as well. Three times four is equal to 12. So that would be eight twelfths. So that missing number was 12. Okay, this one, we've got blank over five is equal to six fifteenths. Well, to get from 15 to five, we divide by three. So we, and we can divide by three here and six divided by three would be equal to two. So that means that the answer would be two fifths and that's it. Okay, and finally, we're going to look at order and fractions. So here we've got some fractions, three quarters, two thirds, five, six, and seven twelfths. And we're going to arrange these in order, starting with the smallest. Now, I'm going to do this one, and if you want to wait, I've got another one for you to do after. So I'm going to do this one, and feel free to watch it, and then to try then the next one yourself. Or if you really want to, you can pause the video now and try this one. Okay, so we've got three quarters, two thirds, five, six, and seven twelfths. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find a common denominator. So I'm going to find the lowest common multiple of four, three, six, and twelve, if I can. So 4, 8, 12, 12. Actually, 12 would be a common denominator of those. So I'm going to go for 12, 12, 12, and 12. I'm going to find equivalent fractions, all with a denominator of 12. I could have used 24. You could use any common multiple of those numbers. I've just gone for the lowest common multiple. So to get from 4 to 12, we multiply by 3. So we multiply by 3 to get from 4 to 12. That means we need to multiply the numerator by 3 as well. And 3 times 3 is equal to 9. So 3 quarters is the same as 9 twelfths. To get from 3 to 12, we multiply by 4. So we need to multiply the numerator by 4 as well. And 2 times 4 is equal to 8. So that'll be 8 twelfths. So 2 thirds is the same as 8 twelfths. To get from 6 to 12, we double it. So we doubled the numerator. That'll be 10 twelfths. And here we've got 7 twelfths. That's quite nice already. And we've been asked to put them in order starting with the smallest. So if we have a look here, we've got 9 twelfths, 8 twelfths, 10 twelfths, and 7 twelfths. So this is the smallest one. So this is the smallest here, 7 twelfths. And next one would be 8 twelfths. And I'm going to write 2 thirds because that's what we were given in the question. So 2 thirds is the next one. Then we've got 9 twelfths, which is 3 quarters. So I'm going to write 3 quarters. And then finally, the largest fraction was our 10 twelfths, which is 5 sixths. So in order, starting with the smallest, we've got seven twelfths, two thirds, three quarters, and five six, and that's it. Okay, so here's a question now for you to try yourself, and I've asked you to arrange in order three eighths, one fifth, seven twentieths, and one half, and you're doing the largest first, and be careful there, you're gonna start with the largest fraction. So feel free to pause the video now and to give this question a shot yourself. Okay, so in terms of the denominators, we've got 8, 5, 20, and 2. And I'm thinking in terms of common denominator, I'm thinking of 40. Because if you do 8 times 5, you get 40. If you do 5 times 8, you get 40. If you double 20, you get 40. And if you multiply 2 by 20, you get 40. So let's go for 40, 40, 40, and 40. So to get from 8 to 40, you multiply by 5. So 3 times 5 is 15. To get from 5 to 40, you multiply by 8. 1 times 8 is 8. To get from 20 to 40, you double it, so double 7 is equal to 14. And to get from 2 to 40, you multiply by 20, so 1 times 20 is 20. So our equivalent fractions, all with the same denominator, are 15 fortieths, 8 fortieths, 14 fortieths, and 20 fortieths. Now we're going to arrange them in order, starting with the largest. So the largest one is 20 fortieths, or that's a half, so a half is the largest. Then our 15 fortieths, which is 3 eighths. Then our 14 fortieths, which is 7 twentieths. And then the smallest fraction is this one, which is one fifth. And that's it. And that's it. So I hope you found it useful going through those fraction topics. If you do want extra practice in the description below, I've got the links to each of the practice questions for those topics. So I hope you find that useful. And just keep up the hard work. Obviously, there's 94 days to go to your GCSE Mavs exam. Keep working really hard in class and at home. Keep watching these videos and all those things. It'll happen, obviously, your five days as well. But I hope you found this useful. Cheers. And I'll see you at 3 o'clock tomorrow. Cheers. Bye.